אז נירוב דה רבה, תולון, ילכס בי ספחירי, ימי בין המצורים, We have to also know the heroes also to give Zdoka and Philo, so everybody should give Zdoka. We have the honor today to have one of the senior Melamdim, Talmud, the Nishta Talmud Vosik, a Melamed Vosik in Unzer Kehilde, in Unzer Cheder, Rav Achosi, the Rav Chaim Berkovich, that will give us some insight into the building of the Beis HaVikdash. Rav Berkovich, Bebekasha. Okay, as we uh, are hearing every night that they have a request that we should learn uh, these times about the Islamic uh, Dosh. One of the things that we learn is Masech Vesmidus, which is a Mishnayis, which teaches us about the second day Islamic Dosh. I was given the merit and the supposed to teach the Amidim of Kam uh, Gamenachem, of Bank Aleph Amidim, Starkum of Mishnayis. This is the nicest gift that we can give them. Start learning with them Mishnayis. Something that they don't learn the whole year. And um, we learned about the Beis Amikdash and it's something that they really enjoy and they do with a lot of chayas. And as I'm teaching it and preparing it, there's a lot of interesting things that come up, a lot of questions that come up that maybe could use a little clarification. And that's all that I want to share over here. I'm not going to go into anything long, just some pull them over here, but it's very simply to um, clarify certain things that can come up. So I'll go through the first two Mishnas, because the two, two, first two Mishnas have a shy that's one with the other to speak about the Shemim. The guards that would be guarding in the base of Mikdash. And we'll stop on a few things to clarify it. So the first Mishnah starts telling us that the Shleshim Makaimus are Kehanim Shayim in the base of Mikdash. There are three places in the base of Mikdash that the Kehanim would be guarding, although usually the Ravim guard, but there are three places that the Kehanim guard and the uh, and Mishnah explains the base of Kinas, the base of Nitzat, so the base of Hamaikat. These are the three places that the Kehanim are guarding. Then the Valavim and the Levim, the Esther and the Machim, they guard 21 places. And the Mishnah starts clarifying exactly what these places are. Chamisha, five Levim, Al Chamisha Shari Harabayas, by the five gates of the Harabayas. The gates means the big openings where you go into, past into the Chaymo, onto the Harabayas. So there were five of them for the, by, by the Harabayas, and each one of them had one of the Levim guarding. Arba, there were four Levim, Al Arba, Pinaisa, Mitaychai, by the four corners, but in the inside corners. That means on top of the uh, Harabayas itself, in the inside corners. Chamisha, there were another five, Al Chamisha Shari Azara, going into the Azara, going closer to the Azara. There were five Levian by the five gates of the Azara. And there was a certain night that was clarified that there was speaks about how many gates there were and why it's mentioned five and other places it's mentioned seven. We're not going to get into that now. Arba, there were four Levian Mal Arba Pinoy by the four corners of the Azara, but this time it was from the outside. Unlike by the Harabayas that they were from the inside, this time they were guarding, they were guarding from the outside of the Azara. So it explained why and everything. The Echad, and then there was another um, lady, Belushka Sakarban, in a place called Belushka Sakarban, the Echad Belushka Sakarayches, one by the Belushka Sakarayches, the Echad Lachayre Beis Akapayres, and there was another one behind the area of the Beis Akapayres, which, which was the Kachik Kedosh. And we try to clarify all these things exactly where they are and the different interesting things that come out on that. We know straight to the second Mishnah, where it speaks about Ish Harabais, the one who was in charge of the Harabais, he was in charge of all the guards. Mishmar Mishmar would go around to all the guards, but who plays all the in front of? He would have torches and flames before him. Any guard which is not standing, I'm the Ishara Bayes, the Ishara Bayes, would tell him, Shalom Alecha. We tell him, Shalom Alecha. Right over here, the Tessarol explains, he would tell him, Shalom Alecha. Um, let's see, okay, the, the Ulai Nechlash Loy Yachalokum could be he's weak and he can't stand. And that's why maybe he sat down or he lied down. Or Ulai Balmach Shabbosu could be he's just a. Uh, uh, he got carried away with his, with, with, uh, with his thoughts. Asar b'shleimai, the Ishar Abayis is going to ask him, like Shalom Alecha, give him a wake-up call and see if he's awake. Nikar Shehu Yashan, if he doesn't respond, he sees that he's sleeping. Chayv Teva Makla, he would bang him with a stick, but it's just like a line, this like a tusay, we have permission to burn his clothing, as I explained that that's if he takes off his clothing and he makes like a mattress or a pillow out of it, that means Imamish was mazed and he um, hit, and, and he went down to sleep, which is 
um, against the respect of the, that, that is posted after the base of Mikdash, sorry, the field of burnt clothing at the cross, whatever, the Hema Imnim, and then it says over there that the other guards around would say, Makoil Bazara, what's going on in the Azara? What's this sound and banging that we hear? So they would say, Kol Ben Levi Loika, this is a sound of a Levi, a guard who's getting hit to the blood of this cut in this rough, and his clothing are getting burnt. She Yashalayashmit Mishmari because he's sleeping while he's supposed to be guarding. And then it concludes by saying that Abeliezer ben Yaakov Aymer, that Abeliezer ben Yaakov says that this taka happened once, Pamachas Matzvah Sachi Imotz Yashen, they once found the brother of my mother sleeping, but start first to say the taka burnt the stolen. Okay, so interesting to go to the Rav, the Rav Tanura, we'll go back to Mishnah Aleph, and he um, mentions about our Dokin Yisrael Mubachos. Why was it that by the Azura, the corners where they were guarding were by the outside corners, unlike by the Arabayas, they were guarding in the inside corners. So he answers like this, like he said, yeshiva ba'azara. You're not allowed to sit in the azara. Elo l'malchus ba'ez David Bobad. Only to the kings that come from the family of David Amel. For lehi ha'yevsher l'shmei l'shaymer l'shmei b'ani the kolalayla. Interesting line. He says that it's not possible for a guard to guard standing the whole night. If you go up there for ha'yev ha'shaymerim, that's why the guards were b'pinas ta'azara by the corners of the outsides, because outside you are allowed to sit. Inside the azara you're not allowed to sit. So they kept them outside. They should be able to sit. By the Shari Azara also, by the gates of the Azara, they weren't inside, but during the outside part, so they should be able to sit. They should be taught in Yeshiva. They should be able to sit over there. So the Chayda, and Emerson is, um, this uh, thing that they were sitting outside is Meusad on the Gemara in Masech HaTastamid. Masech um right over here, that's Tafko uh, Zayin, Ahmed Al. Tafko Zayin, it's the beginning of Masech HaTastamid, but the numbers of the, the way they counted, it starts with the daf and starts here from Sechtas Neilo. So it's really it's in the beginning, it's the second daf over here. It says, um, What's the difference to Azara that Abdinam Bechutz that we do it in the outside, in the guard from the outside? Amra, Harabai is the Itam Oboy, Mesav, Yosef, the Harabai is, it means outside the Azara. That if he's tired and he wants to sit down, he could sit down. That's that's why uh, that's why they're outside. I'm meaning to say, they could guard from the inside. Was uh, inside this, uh, anyways, he's allowed to sit, so why not? Let him be inside in the inside corners. Azara da Azara, the Tamba or Boyla Mesa, if he's tired and he wants to sit down, but he wants to yard, he's Yosef, he's not allowed to sit down. The Amra Mar, and you should be Bazar, El Lamalthus, Bez Dabba Bobad, a million Bachutz. That's why you should guard on the outside. So, what we get from this so far is that the guards, like the Raf says, it's yeah, sharp, impossible for them to be standing the whole night, so therefore they, the fact, they were sitting. So, the question now is in the Mishnah. What does it mean, Nicker? Uh, what does it mean over here? Um, uh, guard is not standing. It looks like this guard is not standing, he's doing something disrespectful. So you have to tell him, he has to give him a wake up call. They were all sitting, they were allowed to sit. That's where it comes out from now. So, anyways, there's another girsa, and this girsa is also brought down in the Gemara Mesech Islamit. And um, we see it on the next summit on the bottom where it says over there a very similar thing, but there's a small change in the in the in the word of so a certain letter that's added that changes everything. It says it'll be like this. Tanan Hassan, we learned that Ishara Bay Sai Mechazar al Kamishmar and Mishmar very similar to what our Mishnah says, but who is Dalka uh Dalka is Lafana, but call Mishmar Sa'ina Aime, Zva Amrlay Ishara Bay Shalom Allah. So there's a vav over there, one vav. Every guard that doesn't stand and say, he doesn't stand up and say, Ishara Bay Shalom Allah. That means the guard was sitting. When he sees the Ishara Bay is coming, out of respect, he has to get up. And say, and that's what the Pshat over here means. So, therefore, everything seems to now uh, um, make sense that they were not able to sit. And uh, when they see the Shrabai is coming, they have to stand up and say, So, this is like two different gear size. And um, we see over here also in the Rambam, the Rambam also says, which is the Rambam, this is all the way toward the end. It says, that means Nikar Shuyashan, that means Avi Parsha is sleeping a Haifa by Makli. Interesting, just if we want to make start looking for the Yukon to make a dig, the difference between the two size, what happens if the Ishara Bayas goes by and you see someone sitting at a guard sitting and he doesn't stand up? So, according to the first girl, so he'll give him a second chance to kind of tell him, uh, Shalom Alech, and see if he responds. And then if he sees he doesn't respond, he'll give uh, whatever Malchus he has to give him because he's sleeping. But according to the uh, second Gersa, which this is the, the more acceptable Gersa, it seems to be that the Amal says it very clearly, um, if he doesn't stand up right away, it means that he's sleeping and they'll bang him with a stick. But anyways, we're not going to get into so much into that. I want to mainly focus on the different areas where the uh, Kahanim and the Levine were guarding. 
But most of the way it comes, there's, um, we see that there's, you can make three groups out of the different guards. The first group would be the Kaihanim. The second group would be 18 Levium, which were guarding by the autumn and by the corners. And then there's the last three, where it says, and the reason we're saying this is because the middle 18 out the Pashtas, they were not in the Azar. As it says clearly, they were in the outside area, so they were able to sit. The question is about the last three Levium that we're going to come to soon, but first let's let's try to stay with the Kehanim. Where exactly were the Kehanim guarding? Were they in the Azara or were they outside of the Azara? Al Pipashtas, they were in the Azara. That's what's mentioned over here also that Bechlal, the Kehanim were inside and the Levium were outside. The Rambam says it very clearly, uh, also over here, but a little bit before that, the Rambam says, um, Mitzvah Shmira Sayyid, Shiyu Ha Kehanim, Shoyim the Bifnim, Bahalavim Bebachutz. That the Kehanim guard inside and the Levium guard outside. Now, what the, right away the question can come up if the Kehanim are guarding inside, we learned before that EF share, it's impossible for a guard to be up a whole night guarding without sitting down. And you're not allowed to sit in the Azadis. So, how are the Kehanim going to survive? The Kehanim different than the, than the Levium. It says EF share, it means that they're all impossible. So, how the, the Kehanim is the, clearly that he's in the Azadis. So, uh, how is he going to be able to do it all night without sitting down? So, um, first of all, let's just clarify what these two places are, and we'll find that there's a little bit of, we'll find like kind of a loophole that, that could somehow be there and they could be sitting also. So, the base of Tinas, this was an elevated place which was right near the Sharamayim. The Sharamayim was right near the Mizbeach on the southern side of the Azara. And on the side over there, there was an elevated place they had to ascend upwards. And over there, there was the base of Tinas. The base of Tinas, that's where they were taught them to play this. They mixed the status, and as the Gemara mentions the, about the base of Tina, about of Tinas, that he knew a certain secret of the Mala Oshan. He didn't want to give out the secret, and he used to charge big money to, be, to make the status because the Mala Oshan is, has to be. The Mala Oshan makes the smoke go perfectly upwards, like a, like a needle, straight up, and then spread around the um, uh, wherever it was going, like in the Kaidah Shakadosh, and Kippur, and so on. And it has to be there, and uh, only Aftinas knew the secret. That's why he had a special room over there. It was an elevated area. And over there, the katitis was made and prepared and mixed, and it was all prepared over there. That was the base of Tinas. That was one place where the Kayin is guarding. The next place is the base on Nitzites. The base on Nitzites was a shad, it was a gate that was on the northern side, all the way by the Kaisal Maravi, northern side. And the reason it was called Nitzites, there's two reasons mentioned to it. One reason is because Nitzites means sparkle. It used to sparkle when the sun would shine and it was, it was very, very high. As it's mentioned, because the base on Nitzites was a shad, and above it, there was another whole aliyah built on top of it. So it was very tall, and when the sun was shining there, it was sparkling. It's also mentioned that there was a fire burning there, that that fire was going to be used if the fire of the Mizbeach goes out. Although it's mentioned that the fire was taken from the base on Maikud, but that's mentioned also about the base on Nitzitz. So over there, there was an uh, area on top, and there was an area on the bottom. On the Aliyah, the Kayin would be guarding, and on the bottom, it says the lady would be guarding. Um, so that's the base on Nitzitz. The base on Maikud is a Huge big room. It says that it was shaped like a kippa, kippa hoya. And in there, there was a lot of things happening. There was a fire burning there for the kahan to be warmed up because they were walking barefoot in, in, on the cold floor. They would be able to warm up over there. And also over there, the kahan would be sleeping. There was like a kind of a, a this was part of it was in the kaidish, in the azar. Part of it was in the chayl. So in the chayl part, the kahan were able to sleep. And in the kaidish part, there were other things that were happening there. And there were these rushy paspas in these heads of the uh, beams that were coming through. And that with that, they made an imaginary line, which where the Kaidish and the Chayil, the difference of the two parts are. So over there, it says also that the Kain would be guarding in the inside part, the Levi would be guarding in the outside part. So there's, there's a, the Pirish on the, um, the one the, uh, on, on the Sechta Stamid, right on the side of the Gemara, of the, of the Mishnais over there. Okay, he mentions over here like this. He says, I'm just going to read it from over here, because based on Tinas, the base on Nitzas Hoya Aliyas, he says, with Shmiras Akehanim, for the Kehanim, it's Sarich Aliyas Mokim Gvoya. You have to be in a high place. But if you look at your Aisan Aliyas, but Nuyas Miktsasan Ba'azara, even if part of them were in the Azara, your Chaylam Kehanim Leishev Shang, the Kehanim could sit over there. What Kesha Hoya Ayefim when they were tired, the Gagid Baliyas, Lainus Kadosh, Lainus Kadosh, the Dabrinim Betochim. Like I mentioned in the Gemara Sachim, that the roofs, the elevated areas, they were not the scattered. They didn't have the Kedusha of the Azar. So right away we had that that's where they were able to sit over there. So that, with that we answered that the Beis Aftinas, which was an elevated area, was not the scattered. It didn't have the Kedusha of the Azar. So the Kahanim were able to sit over there. 
Same thing as the base on Nitzites, which was above elevated area, it was like, so therefore they were able to sit over there. As far as the base, the, the, um, the base on Maikit, he doesn't mention clearly, the Pirish over here doesn't mention clearly, but he does mention a very interesting thing that we don't find anywhere else. He says that the base on Maikit, uh, the, the, uh, the kippah, that it, normally we learned a kippah, it was shaped like a kippah or it had a kippah on top. We're doing the older styles, then they used to make uh, many times like a, a dome on top of the buildings over there. That was the kind of style they would they would build with. That's normally the meaning of kippah. But he says differently. He says that it was built al gabi kippah. It was built on top of a kippah to elevate it so the coin should stand on a higher place. But he doesn't say that that's the reason that the coin was able to sit there, which is interesting. But maybe that's what he refers to or not. But either way, what we have from this is that the kahanim were able to sit wherever they were guarding because they were in an elevated area. Now, the David, right on the side over here, um, asks a few questions. Now, first of all, he brings down the same thing also. He brings it down in the name of Tumah Farshim to the Shainim, the Shmuel Fasid, and the Yitzhak to the Shmuel, that it says that they both say that the base of the base of the Nitzvah, so you are Lios, Kadesh Yechayim, Leisha, they should be able to sit there. That's why they were in elevated places. With the Shagagas, the Lios, like the Shagash. So he asked a few questions there. First of all, very nice. You fixed up the Kahanim, a Babu Levim that were guarding on the bottom. Even you told you would say that the Levim were Mamish on the bottom inside of the Azara. How are they going to guard? They're standing on the ground of the Azara. And besides that, the base of Tinas, where they made the Ketayis, had to be in the Azara. Because the Ketayis is considered Kotche Kedoshim. And we know that anything which is Kotche Kedoshim, which goes out of the Azara, becomes possible. It can be used. It's disqualified. So therefore, Apipashtas, the base of Tinas had to have the Kedusha of the Azara, because the Ketayis was made over there. So we're back again. If the Ketayis that had the Kedusha of the Azara, how were they able to sit over there? And um, then he cont continues to say that the Chal, the places that were Gagos, Mamish Gagos, because that's the way it normally was made, that is the Taka considered the Gagos, considered the roof, and it was, didn't have the Kedusha of the, uh, of the Azara. However, these two places, which the mentions that Ivan mentions, which was the Beis Hanitzitz, and also um, seemingly the, the Beis Haftinas, they really should have been built on the ground itself. The only problem is that it would have made that it would be very hard to go through. It was a mock and sad. That's what you mentioned. It was a very narrow area. And in order to ease up that from people crowding around there, that's why they've elevated it up, up, up higher. But that doesn't negate from the fact is that it had the Kedusha of the Azara. So the, there, the Kedusha of the Azara was taka elevated. So therefore, all these areas had the, had the Kedusha of the Azara. So finally, he answers, he says, Klal of the Milza, this is the cloud. If there's a place in the Azara that's impossible to do something that the Pasuk says you have to do, only, the only possibility is to be sitting, so then you're allowed to sit also. So he says basically that the Shainan were exempt. There, it's an exception, they were allowed to sit in the Azara because it was impossible in the other way. That's how the Dayan concludes. <laughs> So now, basically, we have a little bit of a clear understanding with the Kahanim, how they were able to go through their night by, because they were able to sit wherever they were, although they were in the Azar. <clears throat> now, the only thing now we come up is now with the next three places, and that is the place of the, uh, um, the 19th, 20th, and the 21st Levi that's mentioned by the end of the first Mishnah. Where exactly were these places? Uh, the Rambam, as we saw before, says clearly, that the that 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 Levium were outside. But these three places, if anyone look at, we, we take a look at the structure of the base of the base on Nibdash, they explain everywhere they were Lukhaida inside. So how do these two things go together? Where was the Lishkas of carbon? Lishkas of carbon was called the Lishkas Taloya carbon. Going back to the base Hamaikid, the base Hamaikid, there were four rooms in there. One of the rooms that were in the Kaidash part was the Lishkas Taloya carbon. Over there they would prepare the carbon tonnet. And they had to prepare them uh, before they had to have uh, three pairs over there before. And that's one of the places which very clearly is in the Azar. That's in the place of the Kaidish. Um, and the Levi was guarding there. So the Levi wasn't the Azar. The Lishka Saparaychas, where was the Lishka Saparaychas? So he mentions over here in the Tefetis soil, he says that that's the place where they um, wove the Paraychas. Although Yadati McClain, he doesn't, I don't know exactly where the place is. It was in the Azar. The F It's possible that this was one of the Ta'im. The Ta'im were compartments that were not only in the Azara, they were in the Heichel. This was Mamish inside, inside of the base of Migdash. Even a Kayan can't go in there unless he specifically has to do something. 
Not stam as like to walk in there. How did Levi get in there from into the toil? I mean, that's mamish in the hechel. The next place was the echad la achayde beis hakapayis was behind the kapayis. Behind the kapayis was right behind the kodesh beis hakapayis was the kodesh hakadosh. And behind there, there was a small opening that would go from the kodesh hakadosh into the area of Dazara. There was a yud aleph amis area outside of the um, kodesh hakadosh until the kaisel hamaravi of the um, of the Azara. Why was there an opening there? So it's mentioned in the Sefer Zvachim is because Kachi Kadosh and Karbonis, like a Karbachatas, Ayla, and a Asham, can only be, they can only shake that Patsafin on a Safin's action. It doesn't Patsafin. Kachi Kadosh and Patsafin. However, all the other Karbonis that are Kachi Kalam, you can check the Pachom Makam Ba'azara. But it has to be by Pesach Ayal Mayim. It has to be by one of the openings. Like it says, Pesach Ayal Mayim, by the Mishkan, in the base Hamikdash. Therefore, what they made is to make it. Possible to shech these carbonus and that you shouldn't have to take away the place of the area of the base hashpita, which was reserved for the kachik adoshim. They would open up openings in the hechel around the whole hechel, so that all these places you should be able to shech regular carbonus kachik kalim. And that's why all the way in the back by the kachik adoshim, they also had an opening like that. And over there, a levy would be guarding, which is mamish also in the azara. So how did these things fit when the Ramam says clearly that they were outside and everyone says that they were outside? Were they inside? Were they outside? So there's an, just a point with, um, when the Rambam talks about um, the Levim that were guarding, the Rambam also divides it up into two parts. The Rambam over here says, uh, which is Allah Ches, and he speaks about the first 18, the ones that were by the corners and by the gates, and then in Allah Ches, he mentions the other three. So it's just the question is, could we make a deal from this that maybe these three were talking in the Azara and the Rambam, when the Rambam said that they were uh, they were outside, it doesn't, wasn't referring to these three. For my sir, there's a Sikha, and the Sikha, and the Sikha, where the Rebbe speaks about the guards, the opinion of the guards was to add, to make the place a respectful place, because ain't a day with ultimate Shammel, it's not simple, that you can't compare a palace of a king with this guard, where there is a guard. And the Rebbe brings out that the main thing over here was that it shouldn't be Hesach Hadas. That means it's just like we're not supposed to forget about our film. The same thing we're not supposed to forget about the base. I mean, the Rebbe speaks about that's why they were docked at night. So the Rebbe brings out over here that um, the Rebbe also asks, why is it that in Masechus Tamid, he doesn't speak about the Kayhan and Levium. He only mentions the three Kayhan that were guarding in the three places of the Kayhan. And the Rebbe says, because over there, the main thing is the Mitzad Avoida. Mitzad Avoida, there shouldn't be Hesachadas. And with that, the three Kayhan that were guarding inside they already made sure that as, as the, if they're there, there's no Hesachadas. And then the Rebbe says, mm-hmm. So we can't go further than that. Like the Rebbe is saying that it means it's Bachutz, they're outside. So the Rebbe is Matsayan over here to a safer that's called the Ezra's Kehanim. So I managed to find the Ezra's Kehanim. And the Ezra says something very interesting. A little, um, but it says in a few, a few short words. I'm just going to read a few things he says over there. He says, "In Kain Al Karchach Loimer, the Bahana Gimel Mekaymes Ha'Elu Loi Hoy Yeshayim Le Ba'Azara, Rak Ba'Chutz Ba'Harabayis Oy Bechayil Kenegat Am Mekaymes Ha'Elu." He says they weren't mamish by those places. That's mamish in the Azara, but they were outside of the Azara, and they were just being mechaven. In other words, they were focusing their shmira to those areas. And it's mentioned also, he brings out later, there's a Kahanim that the reason is because the um, uh, the Kutiyim, that they, they were making a lot of tzaras for the Yidin, and they tried to mess up things in the Beis Amikdash, the beginning of the first base, second Beis Amikdash time. So they would try to take away from the carbon palm of the steel. And that's why the, the a lady had to be there, especially he was standing like outside, and he was focusing his eyes, looking the whole time at the Lushka Satloim to make sure that no one somehow crawls in there to start trying to do things that aren't supposed to be done. The same thing is also with the Parekas. The Parekas has mentioned that it became once Tameh and they needed 300 Kahanim to title it, which is a tremendous terror. And therefore, the Kaputim could have been made, could have tried somehow to make a Tameh. So they had to have a special Levi who was outside, as he mentions here, not inside, but he was focused with his looking at that area to make sure that no one's going to go in there. Okay, you could say the same thing with Gabi, that one who was standing. One, but just one, one more point I just want to bring out. According to all this, that the, the Levium were completely outside. There's just one more question here is what does it say in the Mishnah base that the Ba'azara? That the Levium would say, uh, the Shaiman would say, What's this noise in the Azara? Koil ben Levi Loika. If there was no Levi guarding in the Azara, then um, uh, the, they were all outside. What does it mean that Makol ba Azara? 
It wasn't coming from the Azara. The Azara, there were no Levi in there. He says, Koyal ben Levi, like that. The Levi was getting hit. So there's other ones that say that it could have been a Kayan, but it does, but Kayhanim are called Levi also. And there's a whole Mahlaika, so whether the Kahanim were under the jurisdiction of the Ishara Ba'is or not. But the Maeser, the, the, he answers this also. The uh, Ezra's um, Kahanim answers this, I mention quickly, and he quotes from the Rambam, where the Rambam changes something here. And the Rambam says that the Anshe Yerushalayim were asking, Makrel Ba'azara. So he says like this, that when they heard banging, it was a big, big, powerful banging, with like intense hitting. So they said, this must have been that someone in the Azara was caught sleeping. Because or else, why would this banging be so intense? There must be someone in the Azara, Hashem, fell asleep. Lamaisa, he says over there, that's what the way the Esos Kahana says it over here. It says right over here. Um, <coughs> and over there, it says it says it says it says because they couldn't imagine if a lady falls asleep outside in the Harabayas, it's bad. But such hard banging, it must be coming probably from inside the Azar. That's why he says it. That, that's why the Rambam says that the Anshi Yerushalayim, because the Anshi Yerushalayim, they were living further away, so they couldn't really tell where the noise was coming from. Such hard banging, they said it must be from the Azar. But the Emerson is, it wasn't. It was from those that were outside. So he concludes over there, we see how careful we have to be when we're guarding the Beis Hamikdash, and we have to realize that we're not allowed to fall asleep. Anyways, to conclude, to our goals, we got enough markers already, and now we should resign from the current to the Goddess later.